Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Another Growing in Grace is about to go into the record books here in podcast land. I'm Mike along with Joel. Thanks for joining with us again. Got a good program today. I hope you uh, can listen all the way through here. It's only about 14 minutes and we know life is busy, but uh, maybe you can uh, squeeze us in somewhere. Uh, By the way, all our past podcasts at growingandgrace.org. You can subscribe through iTunes. Lots of options out there. YouTube as well. Joel, how you doing? Doing well, and uh, you know one thing that we haven't really mentioned a whole lot in the last few weeks is that we are uh, really a few weeks now into our tenth year on Growing in Grace. Uh, just a few weeks ago, we uh, hit the nine-year mark, believe it or not, of doing this uh, Growing in Grace podcast, and we've begun our tenth year, and uh, we've got hopefully lots of good things to share in the uh, year to come. Always focusing in on the finished work of Jesus Christ what he has accomplished for us on our behalf, you know, stuff that we could never have done for ourselves. And uh, it's not as if God is looking for us to pay him back, but he did it because he is love, because he's kind, because he's good. Everything that he's done for us, he did because he loves us. Now, we can have this genuine, legitimate response (laughs) of love back towards God and of uh, joy. I, th- I think, any, of, of all things, the one thing that God wants from us is that we enjoy what he's given us, that we have joy in what he's given us. And when we're walking around in, in guilt and condemnation, and I know there's a lot of us, we've done stuff. You don't know my past, Joel. You don't know the things I did this morning. You don't know the things I, I did last night. Well, no, I don't know all the things that you've done in your life, but I do know that God has taken care of it already. God's grace, the finished work of Jesus, is bigger than anything that you've ever done, any sin that you've ever committed, any uh, falling short of the glory of God that has ever occurred in your life. (laughs) It's been taken care of by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood of Jesus Christ is the way that your sins have been taken away. So uh, we're here to share that good news here each and every week on Growing in Grace. A lot of people, you know, and they feel bad after what they did last night, Joel, as you were talking about. It isn't because God is there condemning or even convicting them. That's just their new nature doing that. Um, Let me clarify. I mean, the, the Spirit of God is there to remind you as a believer that, He's there to convict you of your right standing with him, of the the righteousness of God in you. He's there to remind you of that. But the reason sometimes people feel bad for stuff they haven't done correctly or the things they've done wrong or sin they've committed is because you've got a new nature now. You've got a holy nature, a righteous nature. That's a part of your identity as to who you really are. So when we behave differently than that, we're aware of it. And so it's it's not such a bad thing. It's just that you don't have to walk into condemnation anymore. You just move on from here and trust God to help you make better choices, which is kind of leading us into what we're talking about today. Yeah, that and that that really is. I really I want to highlight what you uh, said there, just because I think it's so important that we are more aware when we're not being the person that God has created us to be. When a person is a sinner. Uh, so to speak, using that phrase that the Bible uses, uh, not having come to know Jesus Christ yet, still in Adam, not having been born again, not having been made a new creation and raised together with Christ yet, sin is a natural thing. It's something that you do, you don't think much of it. You don't think about how it affects uh, your relationship with God. But then all of a sudden, you become this new creation, and you're actually doing the things that you don't really want to do because your new nature longs for things that are pleasing to God, things that are righteous, things that are holy, and so on and so forth. That Because it's your nature. You don't have to try to get yourself to like good things because it's now your nature. And so when you do walk after the flesh, you know, doing things that aren't 
that you know aren't according to your new nature, you do sense that, you do understand that, you do know that, you are sensitive to it, and that is indeed because you are a new creation who doesn't like those things. And so the the key there uh, is to realize that you don't have to walk in guilt and condemnation when you walk after those things, when you do those things, because God has already made you a new creation. You've already been forgiven of all sins, past, present, and future, and you can walk in the joy of knowing that you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus because God has made you that way, uh, not because of anything that you've done or haven't done. Well, let's talk about the famous story of the woman caught in the act of adultery here, and uh, maybe we'll pull a few things out of this story that maybe some people haven't thought about before. So thanks for joining with us here. Um, I'm in John chapter 8, and let me just get this thing started here, Joel, and then we can start you know, talking about what we want to talk about. Jesus came to the temple, right? And there were people who came to him, and he sat down and he taught them. They're at the temple. Then the scribes and Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in the act of adultery. In the act. And when they had set her in the midst, uh, they said to him, Teacher, So there she is in the middle of everybody. Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that uh, such should be stoned. Uh, But what do do you say, teacher? Of course, they were trying to trick him. They had an ulterior motive here, these guys. They were testing him. Jesus didn't say anything, but he stooped down, wrote on the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw the first stone at her. And again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. Then those who heard it, being convicted by their conscience, went out one by one, not in a big group, interestingly enough. One by one, they dropped their stones, beginning with what? The oldest unto the last. The oldest were walking out first. Probably those who had more sin in their in their past resume. And Jesus was left alone. Nobody else was there, which I find interesting. Nobody was left. And so he was there alone with her and the woman standing in the midst. And Jesus raised himself up after writing on the ground and saw no one but the woman. And he said to her, woman, where are your accusers? Uh, has no one condemned you? And she said, no one, Lord. And Jesus said to her, neither do I condemn you. Go and sin no more. And then it went on from there. So, Joel, interject here. Oh, my goodness. There's so much to be brought out of this. Well, you know, one thing that we're seeing here is how Jesus dealt with a person who had been caught in the sin versus how the law said that that person should be dealt with. Like they said, the Pharisees and the scribes said, the law said that the woman should be stoned to death. She should be put to death for her sin. That's what the law said. That's what God's holy law said. Jesus, he wasn't interested in what the law said, because here's the thing. What was coming, because of Jesus having become a man and come to the earth, and he was going to uh, die upon the cross and be raised again to new life, resurrected, what was coming was a new covenant that wasn't based on the law. And one thing that would help people, I think, to understand this new covenant was for them to see, hey, we're all guilty. (laughs) None of us have kept the law. We've all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Because I think about all of those others who were around, as as you were reading the story, Cap, this stuck out to me. After uh, Jesus said, he who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Those who heard him being convicted by their conscience went out one by one, beginning beginning with the oldest even to the last. What that tells me is that they all realized right there and then that they were all just as guilty as this woman who they wanted the law to be placed upon. They wanted the law on this woman. They realized, you know what? I'm just as guilty as this woman. I'm getting out of here. I don't have a stone to throw at her because I'm just as guilty. That's one thing that sticks out to me, Cap. Yeah, the the law judged her as guilty, and uh, they wanted to see they wanted to see justice uh, until they realized that they were in the same situation. So, yeah, very interesting. And I, I think that the fact that 
they only brought the woman. I, I, I don't know much about the law and, and, the, and the, the stoning for somebody caught in the act of adultery, but if they caught her in the act, I'm still trying to figure out why they didn't bring both people mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Takes two to Some, tango. Yeah, you know, was it somebody they knew? Uh, was it maybe it was another Pharisee? I, I don't know, but uh, I just I find that interesting. But I think their real motive here, even the, even if she was caught, which she doesn't deny anything, but she uh, I think their real motive here was to get this woman. Hey, we got an opportunity here. Let's let's not let's not let this opportunity go to waste. Let's trap this guy, and so they they bring the woman to him uh, in the effort to see if he would somehow say something that would be uh, that would say something against the law that would have been considered some sort of heresy or something. But the other thing that jumps out at me here, too, is that the woman never asked, or at least it's not recorded, never seemed to beg for mercy, never seemed to ask for forgiveness. Just at the end of it, Jesus is there saying, who condemns you? Um, Nobody, Lord. Well, I don't condemn you either. Now, go and sin no more. And that go and sin no more, to me, Joel, I mean, obviously, nobody has ever lived a sinless life at any point. And so I don't think he's saying, go and live a sinless life. I think he was just encouraging her to say, don't make, don't make these lousy choices anymore. Make, make better choices. But go and, and, and live your life and, and be free because you are, you are not condemned, not by any of your accusers and not by me. Right. Yeah. I mean, Joel, Joel, I'm sorry. We're, we're shifting into a new covenant here. We aren't there yet, but we're on the brink shortly before the death of Jesus Christ, where um, we are changing from what the law demanded to what mercy and grace were going to provide through Jesus Christ and, the, and this new covenant that was about to begin. Exactly. That's what I was about to say, because the, the law called for death and condemnation. Jesus showed the woman love, mercy, grace, and compassion, he set her free from what the law said. He set her free from the law of death and condemnation and showed her love and grace and mercy. He said, essentially, you're free to live above this. It's it's not that it was a command, like, you'd better go and sin no more, or else. (laughs) Right. (laughs) It wasn't like that. It wasn't it wasn't a command that she had to obey or else. It was freedom that he was offering her, like you said, freeing her up to make, you know, encouraging her to make better choices in the future, to live above the past choices that she had made. That's what mercy and grace will do for a person. Law cannot do ever do anything to help a person live by it. But grace, mercy, love, compassion, that will empower a person. And so I think there's so many things that, uh, that can be brought out of this happening with the woman being caught in adultery that I, I think when we focus in on go and sit no more, we miss the point that it was really about mercy, love, grace, compassion, and being set free from the law of sin and death. Yes, it wasn't uh, said out of commandment, uh, which requires duty and obligation. It was said out of love. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.